be sure to focus on vectors and parameterization as much as possible. These may be unfamiliar, but I don't want you to be intimidated by these things. Remember that everything that's new is a little scary at first. And if you're in Calc 3, that means you've done Calc 2. And topics like power series and trigonometric substitution are really much more demanding on a cognitive sense than vectors and parameterization really are. So um, think about challenging yourself. Commit to understanding the new concepts. You've got this. You can totally do this. Um, it's, it's, it really is... Uh, strange because it's new, but it really is easier than series stuff. Okay, last time we saw a vector function, you know, R with an arrow on top of it. It's really just three separate scalar functions or three kind of typical functions from like a Calc 1 class um, wh where the input is T. Um, they're just separated by commas and in angle brackets, and then we saw this, this limit. Now, since uh, the limit of a vector function has been defined just above and practiced last time, we can talk about a derivative. So given a vector function uh, with components f of t, g of t, and h of t, the derivative, so r prime, or r, r prime, whether the r is bold or arrow on top, or using Leibniz notation, dr over dt, it is um, very similar to the kind of expression you may recall from Calc 1. Limit h approaches 0 of r of t plus h minus r of t all over h. So what's going on here is um, we're trying to compare two different inputs, namely t and t plus h, and we're trying to find out for those two different inputs, t plus h and t, when you take the difference of those inputs, you would just get h. So in the denominator, you have the change in t, um, which is h, and in the numerator you have the change in, I guess, what we would normally call y, but you have change in output, right? So r applied to the input t plus h, and r applied to t, and then this difference, minus sign here, means we're looking at the change. And so this this is a difference quotient very much like a Calc 1 style difference quotient, and we just need to take the limit as h approaches 0. And the best part is this is most easily computed um, as r prime. Sorry, the prime is a little bit running into the arrow. Um, just taking the derivative of each component one at a time. So this is actually super nice. Um, really not that bad if we just recall our derivative rules. And then as long as we're doing this, one other definition. The vector that's in the same direction as the derivative of length 1. So if we were to normalize, we get what's called the unit tangent vector. Um, the whole point of the unit tangent vector is we just sometimes want to know what direction um, without having a magnitude kind of attached to it. So then by convention, we're just going to say we'd only look at vectors of length 1. That That's when we're looking at the unit tangent vector. So let's take a look at what this looks like in this app. In the app uh, that we'll click on in a second, there's this vector function that's given, and the derivative vector at a specific t value is going to be shown in blue, and the unit tangent vector is going to be shown in red. Let's try setting t to be approximately one and a half. Excuse me, the, the unit tangent vector in red, and then in blue is going to be the, the derivative. So uh, the derivative is computed first, really, just, and then um, you take that blue vector and normalize it so that it's only length one, and it's that tiny little vector shown in red right there. But let's go ahead and move. Um, so you'll see that the blue vector can be of various length, depending, but that red vector, once normalized, it should always be of the same length. So we, we were instructed to make the value of t approximately 1.5, I think just because it'll be kind of easier to see what's happening here a little bit. So, yeah, it's all happening under the, the xy plane, huh? Let's just look from underneath, and let me zoom in a little bit, just using a scroll wheel. Oh, zoomed in too much, and then we lost sight of it. So there's, at this point, um, this, is, this blue arrow means the you know, if you were to increase t, you'd be traveling in, instantaneously speaking, in this blue direction, and... Um, the vector that's in this direction of length 1 is shown here in red, um, called the unit tangent vector. It does look a little bigger than earlier, only because I used my scroll wheel to zoom. 
Okay, so to make sure that we're understanding what's going on, by setting t to be uh, 1.5 exactly, now in the app I could only get like 1.45, but let me just now talk about t equals 1.5 exactly, close enough, right, for, for the app. Uh, we could compute uh, 1.5 cubed minus 3 times 1.5 equals negative 1.125. Um, I computed that because that's just the z coordinate, just to talk about one of the coordinates, right? So the, so when t is equal to 1.5, the point on the curve we're looking at has z value negative 1.125. We could have computed the x and y values as well, but those looked a little more complicated. So I, I just wanted to talk about the z value. Um, so the, here's the parameterization that would be associated to the vector function. And the parameterization describes a point for each value of t, describing each coordinate separately, the x, y, and z coordinates separately. The vector function, um, which was presented at the top here, describes a vector for each t by describing each component separately, separated by commas. So it's really, in the end, the same amount of information, the same um, overall information. It's just, is it technically a point or technically a vector? That's the difference between parameterization and a vector function. Okay, so why r prime of t? Well, if you recall back from Calc 1, if you have y equals f of t describing position, then f prime of t describes the velocity. That's the rate of change of the position at time t. And so the same happens here. Um, if you have a bug that um, has position r of t, then again, uh, r prime of t would give the velocity. So let's look at an example. Here we've got this vector function described in the ijk format. Let's find the derivative and the unit tangent vector. So you just really take a derivative one component at a time. Uh, sine of t squared is going to require the chain rule. That's why there's, there's this 2t out here. Um, we have a power rule application here, t to the fifth differentiated to 5t to the fourth, ln of t differentiated to 1 over t. So there's your derivative function, and then all we need to do is normalize this. Um, so I didn't work real hard here, just applied the magnitude formula in the denominator, and there's your unit tangent vector. If r of t is equal to this vector function, let's find the derivative and the unit tangent vector. So again, just some derivative work. It's really just three separate derivatives for each of the three components. And then here's the unit tangent vector. Okay, um, yeah, here's your interactive question. Uh, consider the vector function sine of t, comma, t cubed plus 4t in two-dimensional space. Notice that r prime of t is cosine of t, comma, 3t squared plus 4. Um, so r prime of 0 is equal to negative cosine of 0, comma, 3 times 0 squared plus 4. It simplifies to uh, negative 1, comma, 4, to that vector. So if r of t represents the position of a bug, then what is r prime of 0? So what is this vector, really? Uh, provide an interpretation. Uh, your interpretation should involve the number 0 and the vector negative 1, 4, right? That is, when you write your answer, um, you should talk about the number 0 at some point. You should talk about the vector negative 1, comma, 4.